Greetings Earthlings, today I'm back with a review of a brand new extremely affordable USB audio interface. That interface being the brand new M-Audio M-Track Solo, which is a two input interface. This will go for around $50 if you are interested, and I will throw some links down below. And being that this is $50 and the old king of the budget interfaces was the Behringer UM2, which is now going for $45 to $50, this is really going to replace the UM2 if the UM2 is not in stock or if you want to avoid buying from Behringer. And for this review, I have the Rode NT1 connected directly to the M-Track Solo. The 48 volts phantom power is on and my gain is set at noon. I am recording at 16 bit 48 kilohertz and I will not do any kind of post processing, but I may have to boost it a bit in post. So check the doobly doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course, you are going to get the interface. You will get the USB-B to USB-A cable. And you'll get a quick start guide as well as download cards for all of the supplemental software that comes with this thing. Then as far as the build quality, it does leave a little bit to be desired, but given the price point and the other interfaces in this price range, I'm really not too surprised by it. It does have an all plastic build quality and feels rather cheap and hollow. The dials or knobs do have quite a bit of wobble to them, although the XLR port doesn't move around out of the ordinary. And I should also note that this interface is made in China, if that at all matters to you. Then when we look at the top of the audio interface, we have two gain controls for input one and input two. Directly beneath both of those dials, we have signal indicators for each input, which will glow red when you get to clipping levels and your audio is distorting. Then you have an output volume control, which does control both the headphone output and the RCA outputs on the rear of the interface. And near the bottom of the top, you have a 48 volts phantom power on or off light. On the front of the interface, you'll find an XLR combination jack for either an XLR or a quarter inch input. You will also find a balanced quarter inch line input, which is input two. On this input, there is a switch to go between line level and instrument level input. There is a 48 volts phantom power switch to turn on or off phantom power. You have the eighth inch headphone output, which does offer zero latency monitoring. And lastly, you have the output switch to turn on or off the zero latency monitoring in the headphones or the monitor outputs. And lastly, on the rear of the interface, you have the USB port to connect this to your computer and you have a set of RCA outputs to connect this to your studio monitors, and you are able to send audio to both the RCA and the headphone output simultaneously. Then as far as the specs, this audio interface only offers 16 bit up to 48 kilohertz. It has a max gain of plus 54 dB. It has an EIN of negative 128 dBA, a signal to noise ratio of 109 dBA, approximately 48 volts of phantom power. Here is the exact measurement. And here is the output specs if you're interested in this information. Now to really test out the preamps of the interface, I have the SM7B connected directly to the M-Track Solo. I do not have a cloud lifter, I do not have a fed head. This is running direct into the interface. The gain is set just shy of 100%. And here is the level that I'm getting. I will of course be quiet so you can hear the noise, the preamp noise, while you're using the 7B. And I do want to demonstrate something I noticed while testing the 7B last week on this interface. When you have the gain up towards 100%, you can move it one millimeter, which I will do right now, and you can hear the volume increase dramatically. I will go ahead and lower it a millimeter again. You hear that jump back down, and one more time, jump back up, jump back down right there. And I will also illustrate this and show you this in the preamp noise test. Now I am going to go ahead and measure the noise floor of the audio interface using an XLR connector with a 150 ohm resistor to emulate a dynamic microphone.
Now with the sample rate set at 48 kilohertz and the I.O. buffer size of 64 samples, we have a 9 millisecond round trip latency and a 4.5 millisecond output latency. When we jump up to 128 samples, we have 11.5 milliseconds round trip, or 5.7 milliseconds output. And when we jump up to 256 samples, we have a 17 millisecond round trip, or 8.5 millisecond output. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug in my electric guitar and electric bass, play directly into the audio interface's instrument input. I will play the raw audio so you can hear how the DI input sounds. Then I will play a little bit of a full mix with some amp simulators in there as well. Now I want to very briefly talk about the headphone amp in this thing, and I will admit I don't do all the fancy measurements like JK over there, that's his bag, I just want to talk about the actual performance that I experienced. As far as the power, I found that the headphone amp was perfectly capable of driving even the Sennheiser HD 650s while I was listening to computer playback. If I am listening to zero latency monitoring, it did get a little bit quiet in the HD 650s, and it was increasingly more difficult to get a good mix between the zero latency monitoring and the computer playback. But just for computer playback, perfectly capable of driving even the difficult to drive 650s. I do also want to point out a quirk here. When you engage or disengage the direct monitoring, if you have any computer playback, there will be a variance in the volume. If you have something playing and you engage direct monitoring, that will lead to a decrease in the computer playback volume. But if you're on direct monitoring and you flip it off and you have something playing on the computer, that will lead to an increase in the volume that you hear in your headphones. I just want to point that out in case you notice that as well. Okay, $50 interfaces. This is a very underserved part of the market with one option so far, the Behringer UM2. But now that one has become two, which is a very good thing. And first up in terms of pros, first off is the price. That is going to be the main selling point here. It's very difficult to get a good interface for 50 bucks, and this fits that bill. Also, I found that it was perfectly capable of driving even the SM7B. The DI instrument inputs worked flawlessly for the electric guitar and electric bass. Is it the best sounding? No, but it's perfectly usable for home recording. The latency on this thing is also very workable, I had no issues with that. And lastly, I love that they allow you to have line input on input 1 and input 2. On the prior king of the budget, you just had instrument on channel 2 or mic and line on channel 1. This means if you have a stereo line level signal, you can run that into your computer with the M-Track solo. You weren't able to do that with the UM2. They didn't need to do that, but they did, and I think that's a really great addition. Then as far as cons, I don't like that it had unbalanced RCA outputs for the monitor. The gain ramp up on the gain dial is very strange, and it seems like they were trying to cram in a few extra dB, even if it is or is not usable, just to add a little bit higher of a spec. 
Also, when I had the gain cranked up all the way, I did start to hear a little bit of digital interference, which is something that I typically hear on some more affordable USB mixers or USB sound cards. And lastly, this is more of a personal gripe, and I'm sure plenty of people will be thrilled about the 8th inch headphone output on the M-Track Solo, but I am more of a fan of the quarter inch because it just feels a little bit more durable. And to wrap up, would I recommend the M-Track Solo? Yes, I would. If you currently have something like the Behringer UM2, I don't think you need to upgrade. The improvements from the UM2 to the M-Track Solo are marginal, but I do think the M-Track Solo is an improvement. So if you're in the market and you're shopping around and you have the option of the Behringer UM2 or the M-Track Solo, I would lean towards the M-Track Solo. As I mentioned earlier, I like that they included a second line level input. So if you have a stereo line level signal, you can capture that with the M-Track Solo. Even though I'm not a big fan of it, I do think the majority of people looking for a $50 interface are going to be using headphones that have 8th inch jacks. So the 1 8th inch headphone jack does seem to make sense, even if it's not something that I would prefer. So in summary, I think the M-Track Solo is a fine alternative for $50 to the UM2, but in all reality, I think you would be pretty much fine with either of these devices at this price point. And I think that's gonna wrap up for today. I don't think I have anything else to say about this, but I would love to hear from you. Do you think the M-Audio M-Track Solo is a good deal or do you think it's a ripoff? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos you can subscribe, logo down beneath me. Don't forget to hit that bell icon. If you do want a higher version, a higher quality version of the audio of this review, go check out podcastage.com. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so. Click that join button, join at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I love you all. I'll talk to you later.